Hey, I, um, is, <laughs> I hope uh, this is working. It's actually the first time I'm gonna use this new software, it's Streamlab, and uh, thanks to a friend of mine, which I met in the metaverse, uh, now I, I, I have this new system of recording and it will be amazing. Um, second news, I, I changed home, as you can see, I'm not in the same place anymore, and uh, like, you know, it's a little cheaper, and then, you know, maybe I can uh, actually start to save some money. And there are no pyramid means anymore in the background, but I have here my pyramid, <laughs> which I bought in, uh, in Giza. So there is a lot of news and uh, yeah, a lot, a lot is, cha is changing, but uh, also the format of the Egyptian feeling is changing. We, we are not going to do the intro anymore, we're gonna, not going to put the music anymore. It's just purely presentation kind of style. Uh, yeah, I think it's more, I think it's better overall. Um, so as this is new, <laughs> uh, sorry if I might not be very cool uh, in like with the, with the video settings, but yeah, it's the first time. So let's go through what we uh, have here now. Ah, um, let me announce, I have an announcement to do and uh, I am organizing an event uh, which will take place uh, in both, like, I, I, I'm still not sure, well, we, I'm working on it, and uh, we, we, it will be a debate between Louis de Cordier and David Miano. David Miano from World of Antiquity and uh, Louis de Cordier from Costco Foundation, they will debate about the lost uh, labyrinth of Hawara. And um, maybe if, if David is watching this video, say, I'm totally, I will be as a, uh, as much uh, like purely not taking sides, I, I, we all, all, all my interest uh, is let's uh, let's put a final word into into this topic, and uh, if we are not able to do it with our debate, maybe we we just need a new excavation, <laughs> or whatever. So, but yeah, uh, I really want uh, David and Luis to talk because uh, I think the public you will also love to to watch the debate. Uh, it will happen. Uh, we are we are organizing it. So yeah. Uh, another thing is thanks. We have hundred subscribers finally. Uh, thanks to Sylvia also because she was the number one hundred. So yeah. And um, I think that's it from my side. We can start actually to talk about uh, uh, what we want to talk about. You know, uh, an edgib. Today we're gonna do a mastaba that is absolutely one of a kind. Uh, it's unique, it's an extraordinary mastaba. Why? Because it's a stepped mastaba. Uh, I'm gonna show you very soon. But first, uh, who was Anege? Anege was the fifth king of the first dynasty. And uh, he has a tomb in Abydos, it's the tomb X. We uncovered uh, very briefly uh, before. Uh, but it's like the smallest tomb of uh, Abydos. Uh, because his reign was like around uh, 10 years, something like that, and uh, so this is the theory we got, so this is why he didn't really, really, he didn't really build uh, much of a tomb. And, and also his mastaba here, it's, um, first of all, it's not his mastaba, like we're not sure if it was his mastaba, but was definitely done in the reign of, under the reign of an Egypt, and started in the reign of Dan. Um, but yeah, it's uh, you go, you're gonna see uh, how why it's so it's so unique. Uh, if you like the video, guys, like the video. If you like to subscribe, please do uh, as always because we the Egyptian feeling will will definitely grow soon. Um, yeah, so uh, you see, so uh, this is the North Cemetery of Saqqara, and uh, since I can't from Google Maps, I can't really tell where this the mastaba is. I highlighted a little bit of uh, the um, like a white spot uh, in the north. Uh, that's not actually the spot of where the mastaba is, but it's just to say it's in the north part of the of the north cemetery of Saqqara. But it's definitely not there. Uh, I'm gonna show you after because I found this aerial photograph. Uh, it's a military aerial photograph from the 1940 after the World War and uh, it uh, belongs to the Isaac Newton Trust and uh, so you can see the mastaba we're talking about is number 3038 and is this one here in the corner of this uh, old cemetery and um, you, why how, how can you tell 
Well, you can tell because of these inclinations of the walls, and I'm gonna tell you, it's nothing. It's, they're not inclined. Uh, it's just the shadows suggest that. But I'm gonna show you very soon what's going on here. Uh, this mastaba is crazy. Ah, actually, I found this <laughs> very nice picture from Walter Emery uh, of the excavation crew, and I thought this was very nice. And uh, I think these guys all deserve uh, a little bit of a uh, I don't know, like a clap or something like thank you guys because uh, thanks to you, thanks for your sacrifice, thanks for you know whatever. We know what we know. So these guys are part of when, when we say Walter Emily, we say a rich, you know, kind of English wealthy person that comes to Egypt and take the locals and get them to excavate. Uh, so thanks to Walter Emery, but thanks also to, to these guys. So. Um, uh, yeah, as you can see, this <laughs> is why we are doing this mustaba. Now the pictures are not great. Uh, actually, this is I haven't been like I haven't found the part one of the excavation at Saqqara uh, from Walter Emily book. Uh, I haven't found the part one. I just found the part two, part three, and this mustaba is in part one. So everything that I found is from other sources, which comes from the Walter Emery's book. So this is probably, you know, this is a picture from Walter Emery and you can see, well, one thing we need to say is that Walter Emery took 12 days to study this mastaba when he was there. 12 days is nothing. So this, I didn't know how, how short of time he was. Um, so this mastaba, it's the first and the only to have a stepped, um, you know, stepped profile, okay? Now, some people will say, okay, this is the beginning of a step pyramid, and it's actually the beginning of a pyramid. No, no, it's not. We are 200 years before Jer, something like that, and uh, something like that, uh, so, so from Joser, sorry, not Jer, from Joser, and uh, w so isn't, we're not very close. Uh, and, and also, this is not structural, So the and also these are brick, uh, these are not stones. And also the, these are eight layers uh, and very shallow. There's like 20 to 25 centimeters. This is not the same thing as the step pyramid, okay? But for sure it's one thing. They were experimenting here. Same way Imhotep experimented with the step pyramid 200 years after. So by this time, uh, the number of mastabas that were present in this area were just four, around 14, something like that, uh, because many like pharaohs built many mastabas. And for example, this mastaba in principle doesn't belong to, as, as I said, doesn't belong to an Egyp in itself. Uh, it actually could belong to a guy called Nebitka, uh, which I don't know much about. So, so yeah, uh, there are two theories about this mastaba. One theory is, says this is from Walter Emery, Walter Emery, <laughs> and uh, he he thinks that this mastaba was built in three stages, but uh, as a as a change in design. Okay, as were the, as they were building, they were changing the uh, you know the the design. But another theory, which came 80 years after, which is like 20 years ago, something like that, it's um, from, I, I'm not sure who came with this theory, but I found it in the Czech Institute of Archaeology. Uh, and there is a document uh, which is done by Prague, by, by the Prague Egyptological Studies. And um, they, they say it was a preconceived plan. And I'm gonna show you why. You know, the pictures are not great, eh? as I told you, but uh, I, I really, uh, it's very hard for me to find uh, things uh, on the internet and, and etc. So the first person to actually excavate and find and discover this tomb was Firth, and uh, I'm not sure who Firth was, uh, but I, I will study more of this, in 1931. And uh, he mentioned this tomb, and that's it. We, we haven't got much comments. And then Walter Emery, seven years after, he comes there, excavates, and, uh, and formulate this theory of the, you know, being a precursor of the step pyramid. But you gotta remember that back then in 1938, uh, you, you don't, you know, 
this was the first time Egypt was kind of sort of, you know, getting together information and it's not, it was, it was not easy time to, you know, get a proper theory of things. And um, so, as I said, I, I didn't find the, the actual original report from Walter Emily, but I found other reports which, you know, they refer to Walter Emily. And uh, so the theory is that, first of all, there was a substructure and there is, a, I'm going to show you later. And then what they did is they built a brick wall around, is this gray one, like around 2.5 meters tall. And then what they did is they, they did this stepped uh, sort of retaining stairs wall, which will structurally, structurally help this, this 2.5 meters wall. And, uh, and then another thing is that they uh, had these two floors. This must have was two floors. So there was like one floor down here, one underneath and one on top. So it, like, yeah, okay, three floors in, 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 uh, in total, but you don't count the substructure. So if you want to count just a substructure, it's two floors, uh, as you can see, ground floor and first floor. And uh, it's, it's, it's not the first time the Mastaba has two floors, but yeah, um, because Dan also have done a Mastaba like that. Um, but yeah, this is the first time we get a stepped, um, you know, uh, figure. Now, as you can see from this axle, you you can see, right? It's not step pyramid. It's just, you know, it's just stairs <laughs> stepping <laughs> around there. And, and these are not even on the whole perimeter. It's just on the um, south, north, west, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. The entrance is always in the east. So this is actually very, uh, this comes from previous Mastabas. And then the second stage will be to fill up and could create a new platform around, as you can see. And what what has been formulated as a theory is that this, at this point, this mastaba was used, uh, or, or at least this platform was used as a ceremonial um, kind of place uh, to, to perform the opening of the mouth, which is this uh, ritual which I haven't, I haven't really uh, studied much, but I have to deep dive of what the opening of the mount is. And um, yeah, I think we can go through the last stage, which is this one to just build around this uh, usual, you know, palace facade um, sort of wall around. And this was very, you know, as, uh, as we saw already in other Mastabas, this is something we, uh, we already saw before. Now these, uh, these drawings are not mine, they're from Mr. Ormeling uh, from the Czech Institute of, of Archaeology. So I guess, thank you. Uh, uh, so this is the plan of the Mastaba in the last stage, uh, because as you can see, the Mastaba was uh, covering the steps. So the steps were not visible. This is another difference with the step pyramid. Step pyramid was meant to you know, show the steps whether in here the steps are hidden behind. So this is why Walter Emil was saying, hey, no, this is actually a change in design. And, they, and But these Czech guys are are, um, are against that idea and thinks, you know, they, they formulated this idea that the actual final, it was all preconceived. And uh, and and, the, and the, the construction of the steps and the different uh, levels of platforms it comes from the idea that it was a construction ritually performing and then you know like the construction is related to the ceremony and this is very interesting as a concept if you if you know what i mean uh, it's very it's very interesting and so this is the Mastabio, and this is actually very unusual because you have the north entrance and the south entrance and uh, entrance to, to, to nothing. It is the entrance to, you know, to the big space uh, here, but uh, it's not the entrance of to the Mastaba. And uh, because the steps are here of the burial chamber and uh, there are two stairs and, but, but you know, uh, they, they were not uh, meant to be accessible. So again, like this section, I, I know like it's very diagrammatically, but diagrammatical, but uh, as you can see, these are the steps uh, on the on the sides and the burial chamber is very like quite, the Mastab itself is, is not 
big, you know, it's like around 17 meters. I'm going to tell you later. But as you can see, it's quite deep. It's probably around, uh, if this is like four meters or more tall, uh, deep. So, um, and, uh, and so here, uh, this is the drawing of, of the stage uh, where, when the mastaba, you know, the steps were, were done. So you can see here was the stair going down and here another one to, to the different level. And then you have here nine, one, two, three, I think more than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, yeah, nine um, place, like places to put, uh, nine granaries, okay? There was granary, uh, there was wheat there. And, um, and then you have like these two doors, one door here and one door there to actually, you know, these are magazine, magazines, what the Emery calls magazines, they're like, you know, uh, storages. And you can see the steps are just on the north, south, and west, but not on the east. Um, not sure why, but this is also, probably this is also why they're saying uh, that this was preconceived. Because if, because, you know, if you want to do, if you want to do an entrance, and you, you say is, is there, then you design the whole thing counting on that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, I don't know. It makes sense also to, to have an entrance which is like flat in a way, but yeah. Uh, all right, uh, the crazy thing <laughs> is next week, because next week uh, we're gonna do the gallery tomb of Hotep Sekhemwe. Now this is my favorite tomb so far. Uh, I haven't, you know, studied yet very deeply the, the tomb, but I'm gonna show you previous, like very like sh quickly the, the plan. And you tell me, you know, this is the plan. This is the plan. Uh, and this guy is like the first king of the second dynasty. So he's not too far from, from this mastaba. It's like, what, maybe, if, well, who knows, like 80 years after? I don't know. Like, I have to calculate. But how complex is this for a early dynastic period of Egypt? This is like, you know, around 2900 BC. Around that, you know, 28, look. 28 and 90 and uh, okay that now this doesn't make much sense to me right like how come you can you know in a in a matter of a hundred or less or just a bit more years you can pass from a burial chamber to this you know it's a um, it's a big leap it's a it's a it's a Small step for mankind, uh, small step for a man, a big leap for mankind, something like that. It's really true, right? Uh, but we're going to talk about next week. And uh, yeah, I think for, for it's everything for today. And yeah, I really I, I hope you enjoyed this last Mastaba. And uh, it, please study if you, if you let me know if you if you have some questions, because I, I have a lot of questions about this Mastaba. There are more things that we don't know than the things that we do know about this Mastaba. So, but yeah, it's so crazy. Uh, but next week, I can't. I can, I've been I really been waiting for a long time to to do this tomb, uh, the tomb of Hotep Sekenwi, and uh, I, yeah, I can't wait to ju just deep dive on this. So I guess I'm gonna see you next week. And if you like the video, like the video. If you like to subscribe, please do. Uh, because it's amazing and uh, I see you around.